Good afternoon, uh, my respected senior and my dear friends. Uh, I am going to talk upon correlation of echocardiography and cardiac catheterization in evaluation of patients with tetralogy of fellow and their impact on surgical decisions. Uh, we did this cross, uh, cross sectional uh, study over a uh, uh, 122 patients over a period of two and a half years, where we, where we tried to correlate uh, various parameters like uh, branch pulmonary artery anatomy and coronary artery anatomy, and with uh, respect to their effect on surgical outcome. Uh, coming to the results, in our study, uh, we could show the good correlation uh, among the branch pulmonary artery size in, uh, in, among, in between the echocardiographic catheterization findings as well as uh, with the uh, gold standard perioperative findings. Uh, in, uh, in our case, we uh, divided the coronary anomaly in uh, two groups, mainly uh, major coronary anomalies and no major coronary artery anomalies. Among the group with major coronary artery anomalies, we further subdivided uh, it into the anomalous coronary artery and the major coronal branch from the RCA, which is crossing the RVOT. In anomalous coronary artery, we further subdivided into four sub, uh, sub categories like a uh, single origin from the right sinus, single coronary artery origin from the left sinus, uh, dual LED and accessory LED from the RCA. In our study, uh, in echocardiography, we could find the 23 uh, patients with major coronary artery anomaly. Among them, 8 patients had anomalous coronary artery as well as 15 patients had the major coronal branch from the RC, which was crossing the RVOT. During catheterization uh, uh, finding with, uh, among the same patients, uh, uh, 12 patients uh, showed the anomalous coronary artery anomaly, while 11 patients showed the uh, major coronal branch from the RVOT, which was crossing the uh, uh, RVOT. While per operative gold standard uh, could, uh, uh, co uh, could match the 10 patients with anomalous coronary artery, while 13 patients with uh, major coronal branch from the RC, which was crossing the RVOT. Uh, in patients with uh, prior uh, anticipation, uh, prior anticipated coronary artery, we could uh, anti uh, we could uh, uh, warn our surgeon that that could be uh, some anomaly and he could he would need some kind of surgical modification. That's why with pro uh, prior priming, uh, 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 patients with a coronary artery anomaly, 21 out of our cohort underwent some kind of surgical modification. Among them, three patients underwent double barrel while 12 patients underwent short uh, transcendular page, while uh, six, uh, among six patients, a uh, surgeon could uh, preserve the pulmonary valve very well as uh, coronary artery was uh, distance was quite safe from the pulmonary uh, valve annulus. Uh, in, uh, uh, we tried to uh, see the correlation between the eco, uh, echocardiographic uh, coronary delineation versus perioperative gold standard, as well as with the CATH finding that to with the perioperative gold standard, where we could uh, uh, also we, where we could see the correlation that uh, eco versus perioperative gold standard would, uh, showed the diagnostic accuracy of 96.72% with positive predictive value and sensitivity of 91%, while specificity and negative predictive value of 97.9%, while uh, catheterization and uh, perioperative group showed diagnostic accuracy of 98.36%, while sensitivity and positive predictive value of 95.83%, while specificity and negative predictive value of 98.98%. So coming to the conclusion, as majority of the hemodynamic and anatomical details are gathered by a non, uh, better non-invasive test and report uh, results of which were correlated well with the on-table surgical finding in our study. So a fact which will guide us in a selecting case that will need invasive test and thus avoiding the subjecting the majority of patients to undue stress and complication of the invasive test. That's all from uh, our study, sir.